Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and promises to bestow them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us Bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Join me now as we repeat responsively the psalm of today, that is Psalm 47, as printed in your bulletins. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud, with loud joys of loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with a sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind, and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the reading of our scriptures. Behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, 
Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading, the epistle reading, comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Join me now as we together recite the tenets of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with the hymn of the day, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to our seventh Wednesday in Easter as we prepare to celebrate Pentecost on this coming Sunday. Today we, we think about the preparation that the disciples are commanded to uh, expect before they go out to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. Jesus is leaving. They watch as he ascends into heaven, and they're joyful. They know what's coming next. They realize that the ball has been passed to them. It's their moment in time to go and do those things that they've been trained to do. But just before leaving, Jesus says, wait. Don't go running out there just yet. Wait until you are clothed with the power from on high. We know that as the Holy Spirit that will be delivered on Pentecost. We will read about how that happens. But the disciples who have been instructed about the Holy Spirit, who have seen the Holy Spirit working through Jesus' own power in his human body here on earth, they're aware that there is something greater that goes on as part of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They realize that this isn't merely just a formulaic approach of going out and sharing words and, and suddenly people are, are led to, to believe in Jesus. And no, they realize that there's something going on here and they're right to wait. Now, nobody likes to wait. Waiting is probably, well, according to Tom Petty, it's the hardest part. Uh, but seriously, if you tell a child, wait, I'll give you a cookie in a while, or wait before we go and take this trip, or wait until you grow up, you have to wait to get your driver's license. You have to wait to be able to go out and, and date. You have to wait before you can get married. You have to wait for all kinds of reasons and in all kinds of circumstances. And many times, we just want to go. We don't want to wait at all. And I imagine that that's probably the case with some of those disciples. Now, there's 12 of them, you know, the apostles. And then there's this larger group of, of disciples that have become part of the entourage. We read a couple weeks ago about 72 that went out and did amazing things through the power of God and came back and reported their results to Jesus. So this is a larger group of people. And I imagine that somewhere in that group there are some apprehensive folks who are saying, okay, i got to go hit the streets. Now i got to go out and do all these things that I've been trained to do. Maybe not so excited. Maybe more nervous. And then, of course, there's the the on fire people, right? The Peters who say, hey, let me loose. I got this. I'll take care of this. Waiting is necessary in this situation. Jesus tells them to wait, to be clothed with the power from on high. Because without God's power, nothing that we do has any value outside of our own human possibilities. And that's never going to be good enough to move people closer to God. We don't save anyone. We don't, we don't forgive sins. We, don't, we, we can't change a thing about anyone. That happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. That happens through Christ and His Word speaking to the heart and the soul of an individual, the Holy Spirit, as we've heard him referred to as the truth, the source of truth, the, the source of our awareness 
of who God is, the way in which we understand and recognize God, that Holy Spirit is, is necessary to be able to do anything of value. And so the waiting is necessary. And look, we could go. Look, there are lots of people, you know folks, I know folks who say, I'm going to go out and I'm going to go do this. And maybe they're well-intentioned and maybe they truly believe what they believe. And they go out and they do it and the results maybe aren't always what they expect that they would be. And the reasoning behind some of those failures might be that we rely too, too much on our own capability. We're not willing to wait on the Lord. Now that hasn't had really good results historically. If you're told to wait, you should wait. Adam and Eve were told to wait and not eat anything from a particular tree. Didn't go so good for them. Many, many generations later, another perfect example is King Saul, who, instead of waiting for the power of God through the prophet Samuel, decides to take matters into his own hand before going out to battle and seeks a source of, of knowledge and information in the form of a Enchantress, the witch at Endor, and that doesn't work out so good. Two sons of, of Aaron at one point in Leviticus and Deuteronomy talks about them offering unauthorized fire. They were unwilling to wait to be authorized as priests, thinking that, hey, we're Aaron's sons, we can just go and do this. Didn't work out so good for them. See, God has a plan of timing and people and places that is very, very specific. And we can certainly go and try and avert that plan and do things by our own will, but our efforts are going to be thwarted. And they're certainly not going to be what God wants. So when Jesus tells the disciples to wait for the power from on high, to wait for that capability, that, that reinforcement of their own power. He's asserting for them the certainty that their efforts will be successful. Because it's not eloquent words or well-written sermons or, or thought-provoking dialogue that brings people to Christ. It's the power of God in those words, behind our actions, through our efforts, that draw people to the heart of Christ. Without the power of God, we could never know God. Without the Son of God, we can never approach God. The ascension is a momentary account in the life of Jesus, which affirms for us that death in this world is not death in eternity. It is a mere stepping stone, a doorway up and into that heavenly realm that the Lord has planned for us. And yet, while we are here, in our lives, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, we still need the power of God with us every single day. Jesus, knowing that, promised to send the Holy Spirit when you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, Scripture says you can only say Jesus is Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that no one filled with the Holy Spirit could go against Jesus. As we, as we look toward Pentecost next week, as we look toward this opportunity that's coming very, very soon, our 
waiting is soon over. Soon we will be gathered again here together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Granted, with some provisional changes in place, coverings for our face, spacing appropriately where necessary, all kinds of protections allowed for, but the wait will soon end. We've been cautious not to move ahead of God's plan, not to move beyond what we believed God was asking us to do in the moment. We thank you for your patience as you waited patiently for this opportunity to gather again together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Your waiting will be rewarded. Just as the Holy Spirit will reward you with the power of God from on high to do amazing works as Jesus described in this world for the good of the kingdom and for the good of your life later in eternity. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Enjoy now the offertory song from Paul the Younger. Please join me. Rise if you're willing and able for the prayers of the church. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Ascended Lord, hear the prayers of your people and grant our requests. That the church of Christ may flourish and the good news of Christ crucified, risen, and ascended would be proclaimed to all the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the Lord may richly supply us with faithful pastors who will preach the word in season and out, and that we may believe and live out this gospel. We pray for Synod President Matthew Harrison, Bishop Derek Cakes, Circuit Visitor Charles Byer, for our church council, our board of deacons, all of the leaders of our congregation. May your Holy Spirit continue to bless and guide them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the nations of the earth may seek peace 
and that the leaders of our country may pursue justice, righteousness, and peace, that the pandemic may come to an end, and that livelihood and common life may resume. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all who are afflicted may be strengthened in illness and comforted in adversity. We think especially, Lord, of those listed in our prayer folders, those in our hearts and in our minds, those names that we lift up to you now. That the Lord may grant us joyful hearts and peace at the last, knowing that neither death nor life nor any powers can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we always pray and remember our first responders, our medical professionals, those who work daily to keep our nation and our communities safe. We lift up the names of our active military family members, Patrick, Kelly, Adam, Joseph, Ryan, Robert, Amber, Ashley, Lauren, Josh, Nicole, and Jonathan. For these and all those who serve us domestically and abroad, Lord, we ask that you protect them, watch over them, and bring them home soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we commend to you all those for whom we have prayed, trusting in Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.